Být očištěna od svého říchu, abych mohla mít vztah s Bohem. In 1967, Pastor Paul Henderson of Bowie, Texas, and Brother George Anderson, missionary to Mexico, made an initial missionary trip to the Tlapaneco Indians in the mountains of Guerrero, Mexico. As a result of that initial contact, Brother Anderson began working with the Tlapanecos. He attempted to reach them in Spanish, but soon realized that their understanding was very limited. It became clear that, if they were to have an effective ministry among them, he needed to learn their native tongue. George and his wife Sharon had studied Spanish in a language school, but there was no school that taught Tlapaneco. They were unprepared to learn without a school and a teacher, and they realized that their Bible college had not taught them how to learn languages. Thinking that perhaps other Baptist colleges offered language learning courses, George wrote letters of inquiry. Each school, however, told him the same thing. No, we don't teach missionaries how to learn languages, especially unwritten ones. His question was, why? Why aren't we Baptists training missionaries for pioneer work? Why aren't we translating the Bible? Why are we only attempting to reach the few groups that have language schools? And thus, Baptist Bible Translators Institute was conceived in the heart of George and Sharon Anderson. They left Mexico and enrolled in the training program of New Tribes Mission. The New Tribes people graciously shared their expertise with the Andersons, knowing that they would use it to begin a similar program for Baptist missionaries. Brother Anderson later attended the Summer Institute of Linguistics to gain more skill and enhance the program. In September of 1973, the Baptist Bible Translators Institute began in Fort Worth, Texas with three student families. The following spring, the school moved to Bowie, Texas, where adequate acreage was obtained through the help of Pastor Henderson. It continues today under the spiritual oversight of Eastside Baptist Church and Pastor Jamie Reed. People often ask us what languages we teach here at BBTI. Actually, we don't teach a language. We prepare the missionary to learn any language. All languages, regardless of how difficult and strange they seem to us, have a structure that can be discovered and mastered. We use examples from many languages to show the missionary the type of structures he may encounter. The BBTI graduate is prepared to learn any language, national or tribal, written or unwritten. The first class the missionary student takes is phonetics. Here the student is taught nearly all the possible sounds heard in the languages of the world, how they are made, and a written symbol for each one. Of course, he learns to pronounce these sounds correctly, not only the vowels and the consonants, but also the stress, tone, and rhythm. No missionary should attempt to learn a foreign language without first studying phonetics. The next course taught is phonemics, not to be confused with phonetics, Phonetics teaches the missionary to recognize and write every sound he hears, but phonemics is a scientific method to determine which of these sounds affects the meaning and must have its own letter in an alphabet. Watch as I say the word paper. Paper. Notice that a small puff of air moves the paper with the first P, but not with the second. Paper. To an English speaker, they sound the same and can be written with the same letter. But in Thailand and many other places, they are very different. In Thai, that small puff of air is the only difference between pak, meaning mouth, and pak, meaning forehead. The difference must be symbolized when writing. Using phonemics, the missionary gives an unwritten language a well-suited alphabet containing just the letters that are needed and no more. Phonetics and phonemics show us the language structure on the sound level. And the following class, Morphology, deals with the word level, or how words are formed and change in meaning by what is added to the root. For example, a worker who works daily does the work. He worked yesterday, he's working today, and he will work tomorrow. 
We have a workable plan to hire more workers, but we need to rework it. Depending on what prefixes and suffixes we add or don't add to the root, we change the meaning. Understanding how a language is put together makes it easier to learn, and morphology shows how the language works on the word level. The study of syntax teaches the missionary to discover how the language functions on the sentence level. In language learning class, the student, using his phonetic skills, practices working with an actual foreign language. What do I mean? Inu. What's that? Inu. What is that in English? Dog. Very good. He learns a step-by-step -step method that he can use to learn any language in the world. Most missionaries begin as students and thus are dependent on someone to teach them the language. The BBTI graduate takes charge of the situation, and with the help of a native speaker, he learns their language. Fluency, as important as it is, is not the only goal for the missionary. He must also discover the culture of the people. Ethnology and cross-cultural communication teaches a systematic way to learn the culture, the complete way of life. Often the missionary says the right words according to his culture, but his message becomes distorted in the minds of the people. Since our message is a matter of eternal life and eternal death, we must do all possible to prevent this confusion. Culture shock is another big problem facing all missionaries. It causes fear, frustration, and physical sickness. It discourages many and sometimes destroys their missionary career, sending them home prematurely. An alarming number of today's missionaries leave their field before completing the first four-year term, never to return. Many of these casualties result from failure to adapt to the culture and learn the language. However, before we question the quality of missionaries being sent today, we should reevaluate the quality of their preparation for the field. So few are willing to be missionaries, and we can't afford to lose them. It's a tragedy when a family spends many years getting to the field, only to return home in a very short time. We at BBTI take culture shock seriously. You will experience culture shock, but you can learn to recognize it and deal with it. Your goal is to adapt to the new culture so that you feel comfortable with it. There are over 7,000 different languages in the world today. Nearly half of these have never received even one verse of God's Word. We believe that Bible-believing Baptist missionaries should be involved in Bible translation work translating from the correct God-honored text and using methods that produce a Bible that is both faithful to the original text and understandable to the people. Our Principles of Bible Translation course deals with these matters. A missionary may say, Our people already have a Bible. I don't need to learn how to translate. He is mistaken. Every word he says or writes must go through an American mind and be put into the words of the people. This course will teach him to communicate more effectively, even if he never translates the Bible. We may diligently translate the scriptures or other literature, and then discover that the people either cannot read or don't care to. Literacy class trains the missionary to motivate and teach people to read and write their language. <laughs> Students learn how to plan a literacy program that suits a given people's way of living and learning. Other courses such as New Testament Greek, Deputation Principles, Field Medicine, and Teaching English as a Foreign Language are also given during the year. In addition to these formal classroom studies, much is learned informally in the afternoon work detail class and from day-to-day -day living on campus. We believe that every Baptist missionary needs the advanced missionary training that BBTI offers. To send an ill-prepared family to the field is unnecessary and unfair. It's unfair to them, to the sending churches, and especially to the lost souls to whom they are called. We are encouraged to hear our graduates say how much the BBTI training has helped them. A graduate in Indonesia writes, 
I was worried that we were wasting our time there at BBTI. My husband was all for it, but I was reluctant to spend the time there instead of on the field. However, after the last few months here in this third world country, I am very convinced that the training was absolutely necessary. Please, keep teaching the culture classes. I believe that the people will be more understanding of a bad accent than of a problem with a missionary suffering from culture shock. Keep up the work detail. Many practical skills are needed. Jim writes to us from Mexico. The BBTI training I received has been invaluable. I have learned Spanish fluently, and most people do not believe that I grew up in the U.S. because of my good accent and understanding of the culture. Now, with the Lord's help, I plan to learn Mije. Keep reminding the brethren of the need for missions and the need that we missionaries have of linguistic training. Lost souls are running out of time, but God's work deserves well-trained laborers. Missionaries feel an urgency to reach their field, and rightly so, but pray that they will also see the value of a nine-month program that will train them to arrive on the field equipped to take charge of their language and culture learning assignment. Above all, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth multitudes of laborers into His harvest field.